Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining the IDVO Maps for Click webinar this afternoon. Uh, a few things before we get started here. Uh, just so everyone knows, they've joined in a listen-only mode. Um, if you have questions, there is a Q&A panel that you can submit your questions via type. And at the end of the session, um, there will be a few minutes reserved to answer those questions. So get, to get us started, uh, just a little back, bit of background about John Daniel Associates. Um, we've been in business for about 20 years. We're a business intelligence and data warehousing uh, consultancy. Um, primarily, we work in the technologies of Click and IBM Cognos and their underlying um, <clears throat> different components. Uh, as well as we have some web developers on staff uh, working with uh, some custom application development, whether it be supporting Click. Cognos or um, standalone products that we build in house. We are based in Pittsburgh, but we have customers spread all throughout the U.S. A bit about our agenda today um, we're going to do an overview of IDVO Maps for Click. We're going to look at some features and functions, talk about integration points and the technical architecture of the IDVO platform. And then we're going to do a demonstration using ClickSense um, with some particular use cases uh, related to using maps in conjunction with um, cust various customers' data analytics uh, around the mapping space. And at the end, we'll have a bit of time left over for a Q&A. So to kick us off, I want to just touch on who IDVO is. This is a Swedish company that was established in 2002. They really are mapping specialists. Uh, I think one point here to note is that IDVO has a, a, a very broad knowledge of um, mapping. They built a product for Click on their mapping engine. So this was not a group of Click experts that decided, decided to build a mapping product. It was the other way around. These are a company that has deep experience with mapping um, that decided to build an extension for Click. So a, a couple of things that they do, uh, compression and streaming of mapping, they're fully equipped. They do all the work in-house from raw data to the geo services they provide. Um, and they have clients in security, defense, transportation, and logistics, um, some of those being inside of Click, and, and some of them they're supporting outside of Click with, again, with their mapping technology. Um, a bit about the IDVO product and how it works for Click. It is supported in Click View and Click Sense through uh, the Click Extension API. So that's where the integration piece is done. The interfaces are slightly different, but they use the same uh, mapping services, the same engine, and uh, it's pretty easy to work between Click View and Click Sense. Um, the plugins look slightly different, but again, pretty much the basic concepts are the same. Uh, the way that it's deployed is in the cloud or on a local map server. We'll talk a little bit about that in depth uh, a couple slides from now. Um, it's vector-based, multi-layer architecture, and uh, it's built in HTML5. Uh, if you have an HTML5 browser, it will be supported with IDVO Maps. So one thing to note for those who are Click View customers who have logged in, um, in order to use any extension in Click, this may not be clear, but in, to use any extension in Click, you have to be using the web mode. You can't, when you deploy your Click View application, um, you're not able to use the, the plugin and have the um, support for the, the different extensions that have been built. So IDVO is no different. If you're a Click View customer and you're thinking about IDVO mapping and you rely on the plugins um, for other things, that may be something to consider. Click Sense, of course, there is no contention there. So the next few slides I'll be talking about uh, just high-level features that are included in uh, IDVO mapping, and then we'll actually see those features uh, through the demonstration portion. But I like to spell these out. Um, to get started, there's points, charts, and symbols that you can place on maps. So whether that be different types of shapes, bubble squares, pie, chart images, um, these are dynamically controlled by the expressions in Click for things like size and color, 
Um, you can use integrated click-through functions along with the mapping functions that IDVO provides um, to get some pretty cool effect. Uh, and then you can also customize things like the pop-up labels uh, and the windows that the users see. So there, there is a lot of flexibility in terms of the display. Um, the position is by place or by coordinate, and I'll get to that in a second. And the geocoding is on the fly for well-known places. And why that's pretty cool is that uh, out of the box, IDVO's mapping service provides support for mapping without coordinates. So you can reference by name. Um, again, the lookup's done on the fly for placing the, uh, the items on a map or drawing custom areas or shapes or things along the those lines. Um, there are support for custom areas, which we'll talk about during the demonstration. Um, and then there's also support for drill down and hierarchies within the mapping, and we'll show some examples of those as well. Other supported features, uh, lines and arcs. So we, we use these to visualize movement, uh, track the flow of, of goods or shipments, money, people. Um, it's their support for straight or curved arcs. We'll get into a customization and, and go through an example of that as well. Um, again, the lines, the width is controlled by the click view or click sense expression. Uh, and you can color the segment or line based on an expression or the dimensionality. I think lastly, the, the last feature here that we'll touch on today are heat maps. Um, these are true heat maps. There's some mapping companies, or you may see maps displayed with colors shading different areas. Um, sometimes people interchange heat maps with uh, uh, other types of um, mapping, but ultimately IDVO supports both. Um, and again, either in geographic units or pixels, colors, transparency, and weight, that could all be controlled in a heat map. We'll take a look at some heat map examples. So onto the architecture piece before we get to the demonstration. Again, as I mentioned, it's supported in both Click Sense and Click View. Um, it's based on their Web Map 5, which is a, their IDVO's JavaScript map engine. Um, and integration with Click is done entirely through the JavaScript uh, with no other dependencies other than the connection to their Web Map 5 uh, service. Different deployment scenarios. There's the standard deployment where IDVO Maps is cloud-based. It's hosted on um, Amazon servers. And then the installation from the click side is that you're just dragging and dropping the extensions into the extensions folder, whether it be in ClickView or ClickSense. Um, if you need a custom deployment, IDVO also provides options for local hosting. So if you rather have that mapping service located internally in your, on your servers, um, they will support that. It's a different licensing, but ultimately it's possible. And just a, a note here, by default, OpenStreetMap is used as uh, source data, but if you're looking to use another service, such as here, Tom or TomTom, Tom, um, those things can be supported as well. There, one thing to mention about IDVO while we talk about their product, um, John Daniel Associates is partnered with IDVO, and, and they've been extremely supportive of custom use cases uh, in helping us serve our clients for different mapping applications. Um, their, their customer service really is top notch. So note on integration, um, they try to be wide open. I think we haven't seen any issues with them you know, not supporting something we've asked for. Um, you, you can see here how the integration is done through different standards for vector and raster data. And then if you have an existing geo infrastructure, for example, example Esri, ArcGIS, or Map Server, those things can be utilized uh, with IDVO service um, to get that information into Click. So depending on if you may be getting some custom things out of those services, or you may have already built some things that you want to be able to reuse inside of Click, um, IDVO can support that as well. So just a peek forward, um, March 
uh, a month away here. They are set to release a new product, which we actually haven't seen yet, but they did provide um, some information of what to expect in this product. So this is just a little bit of a teaser. Um, Geo Analytics from IDVO, um, they're adding support through uh, an integrated connector, and you can see here it will be done through a wizard interface for things like geofencing, custom areas created from common areas, um, clustering for aggregation, and then routing drive time areas, distance tables, those, those types of things. Now, we in the past have been able to support some of these items um, with doing a little bit of custom work outside of Click, but their newest product um, is adding a whole bunch of features that look like will streamline a lot of that work. Okay, now on to the demo portion. Um, what I plan to do here is a build from scratch uh, of IDVO Maps and ClickSense, and then we'll take a look at some other pre-built examples to cover some of the use cases that were talked about um, in, the, in the invitation that you saw. Again, I'm doing this demonstration in ClickSense, but if you're not familiar with ClickSense, the concept uh, of how these things are being done is exactly the same in ClickView, and I'll talk a little bit about the layering and, and what that means. So to get us started, I have a blank ClickSense document. I just loaded some data, and I want to show it. It's very simple. But to understand what you can put in and then what's possible, what's capable from this type of data. So this is simple shipping lane data. We've created um, just a, a shipping line, uh, a starting state, an ending state. So there's a end here, a start, an amount of sales, and then some other dimensional information associated with those sales. Uh, there's some zip code information as well. So one of the things you'll notice in here is that there's no latitude and longitude included in this particular data set. IDVO does support latitude and longitude, but if your data does not have that information in it, um, and it may be difficult for you to get, but you're okay with looking at things at a zip code level or a state level, or um, they support county, their website has a list of all the different um, things they support out of the box, you can still get a good visual representation through mapping um, with this level of detail. So that said, I'm going to create a new sheet here, start as a blank sheet. Now this is true for click sense and click view. What you see on the left hand side here are, um, one is the IDVO map. Once you install the extension, you get the IDVO map object. So I'm going to drop this onto the canvas and you'll see that just looks like a blank map. Um, and then. These other items here are the layers that can be applied on top of the map. And one of the things that I think is common in mapping is creating these different layers of information on top of each other and seeing how they interact is really where um, our customers are seeing the value in mapping. So the first thing I'm going to do is start with a line layer. And the way this works is you drag the line layer to your canvas. And these two items are linked right now. There's a way to unlink those or link different layers with different maps if you have multiple maps on one sheet. Um, but let's go here and add the dimension. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to allow that line definition uh, to be the dimension. Um, and then it's asking me that I need a from, a to, how wide I want the line to be in the color. So I'm going to pop this open. And we're going to enter um, the field of start. Again, this was a, a state that was stored in this field. That was the data behind the scenes. And I'll add another. So that's going to be my starting point. I'm going to add end as my end point. So right away, just with that information, um, I get the representation of the different lines on the map. And if I scroll over one of these, it's going to tell me uh, the line name, which was in this case was named Pit to Las Vegas, 
and then the starting point and the ending point um, are also written on there. So the next thing I may want to do is change the width size of these different lanes. I'm going to add another additional measure, and I'm going to select sales this time and just do a sum of sales. So what's happening is in this layer panel up top, um, I'm getting a representation of a, a legend that's showing me based on how wide the line is sort of where the sales are. Um, so that's kind of nice. I'm also going to rename this and just call it Total Sales. Clean that up a bit. Okay, the next piece I'll do, so that's one layer. The next piece I'm going to do is overlay um, additional information, for example, uh, an area layer. So I want to shade a particular area. In this case, I'm going to use State. So dragging the area layer out here, and I'm going to select state as my dimension. So there's the states that get lit up, and then I'm going to also do sum of sales. So now I get a, a, a scale, a diverging scale of um, hot and cold based on the amount of sales that are taking place in each of those states. Now, our data set is rather simplistic, um, but if you had shipping lines that were multiple shipping lines running into a particular state or different places in a state or running out of a state or a city, for example, um, you can use uh, the lines to represent each of those individual things, and then you can use um, something like this area layer to represent the total amount that's happening inside of the, all the lines that are going into an aggregated bucket. So as these layers get stacked on top of each other, um, they become pretty powerful. So the last thing I'll do here on this chart before we take a look at it is I'm going to add what's called a chart layer. And in the chart layer, I'm going to use um, the state again. Oops. And then the dimension of type. And if you remember in our data, Type represented um, the different types of product lines that were being sold. And I'll do some of sales. So now what I have is a representation of a chart, which is a pie chart, on top of each state. So now the total sales are 101,000, and I also can see the breakdown of that 101,000 into the different categories. Um, I could also make adjustments on the chart type if I wanted to change things um, in the presentation. If I'd rather see that information in a bar chart or in a pie chart, and I just don't want it to be that at that large, or I want it to be larger, those types of things can be adjusted. Okay, so now that I've built this um, mapping object, in, from an interaction standpoint, I want to cover a couple of things. Because I have these different layers across the top here, I can selectively enable or disable these layers without going back into the, to the edit menu. Um, so from a user perspective, this is an easy way you know, to allow different types of analysis to happen on the same mapping object. And then the other thing that's supported here, right? there's a, a zoom in and zoom out function as you would expect it to work. Um, and as you hover over the different items, if I hover over the, a line, I'm getting the information about the line. If I hover over the state, I get the info about the state. And then the chart, I'm also seeing the breakdown. So there's a whole bunch of, you know, if you were to build this out in different chart types, you may have three or four different charts to represent this information. Um, here you're getting all of it together as well as the, the representation on the map, which is pretty powerful. Um, in terms of selections, what's cool about this is there's a whole bunch of different stuff going on inside of this map. So if I want to make a selection there, I DVO, the object is basically going to ask me, what dimension do you want to select? Do you want to select uh, the line, the state, um, or the state area? So I'll do state area, and you'll see those, what I selected, those three pop up, um, and then I can make confirm the selection on those things. 
So you can do the selection on the whole chart, and then you have some sort of finite control over what dimension actually gets um, refreshed when the information is applied. Okay, so that's the basics of building. Um, hopefully that gives you a good understanding of how easy it is to use a DVO map for click and uh, the type of data that you can use uh, as an input to, to get to this end goal. So what I'll do is close this application and I'm going to go into a different ClickSense application and start on this U.S. population tab. Um, the point of this particular demonstration is to show uh, sales information along with external demographic data. So in this case, we're looking at the U.S. population. And why this may be useful is if you're looking to um, see if your sales are landing in high population areas or outside of high population areas, um, this external information blended with uh, the, your sales data can be displayed on a map. And we'll kind of see that as we drill down through here. So because we're based in PA, I'm going to start in Pennsylvania. And you'll see the other feature here, which is a, a, zo a automatic zoom function as well as a drill down. So the underlying information supporting this um, is at the state county zip code level. Um, again, it wasn't latitude and longitude um, that we're doing this by. And let's go to Allegheny. So as I scroll over, I have two measures in here, the total sales and the total population. And of course, if you know CLIC, you understand that you can start dividing those things and coming up with ratios and you know maybe normalizing those ratios and, and trying to find out through a ranking system, et cetera, et cetera, who's the top and who's the bottom performers. Um, this is a simplistic example, but it's possible to do those things. And then once I click there, I'm seeing the individual different zip codes where there are sales um, inside of that particular county. So you may say at this point, well, that's cool and all, but um, the problem I'm going to run into is that my sales ter territories are not defined by state and by county. Um, my sales territories are custom, and I need to be able to represent those. So let me back up right here, and we'll take a look at region. So this region data, um, these are custom regions based on a collection of zip codes. So some of them fall along state lines, as you can see, um, but some of them do not. And this was something that we um, we had to do a little bit of external work to get here, but really not much. We had a collection of zip codes that made up a region, um, and then we got some shape files that are readily available out on the internet, and uh, we combined those two things in a in a database program. If you're familiar with PostgreSQL, um, they have an, a, a GIS extension that allows you to do dissolving um, along common um, dimension, dimension attributes. Now, it seems like we haven't seen this from IDVO yet, but it seems like in that future set, um, they're talking about, future set of features, they're talking about supporting this type of uh, dissolving right inside of the tool, but that's just yet to be seen. But here, if I click on a, a region of Eastern, um, there's sub territories that are existing inside of that region, uh, and I can continue the drill down. But this is just to show that we can take the same population data and the same sales data, and we could cut that up and display it on a map, not by uh, something that you would expect, um, like a predefined zip code or county border, but something that's custom, um, that's a collection of different things. It, and the examples could go outside of that as well. We were dealing with a collection of zip codes, but um, if you have different boundaries for your uh, region, or I mean, even to the point where um, you know there's tools where you can go into a map and you can draw boundaries uh, if you want to do it that way, if it's not set on a particular existing geography, uh, this product will support that.
So the next thing I want to show is the um, an example of a, a bubble layer here. Again, we're looking at the region. Um, the difference between this one is that when we get to a, a drill down state, these individual blue boxes are representing the density of where the sales occurred. And then the size of the box is representing the amount of the sale. Um, so having a couple of different layers in here, one a bubble layer and one an area layer, I, I'm still able to see the boundaries and look at the total sales inside a particular um, territory. But then if I scroll over one of these, uh, I could look at the sales for a particular job or a particular sale. Um, and again, seeing the clustering of where that information happens. So that's one way to look at this particular data. I'm going to clear this off because you may your mind may be going to, well, I don't know if I would use that. I might use something like a heat map to represent the hot spots of sales. And uh, let me just do a drill in here, or a zoom, rather. So similar information about um, a job where, or where sales are happening and where those sales are concentrated at. Now, this particular use case, and we don't have the full use case blown out here for you um, it was the additional plotting point was where do the sales representatives live in relation to um, where the hot spots of their sales are inside of their territories so blending that information together um, this particular customer was trying to do some analysis around do we have the correct coverage model for uh, the population and the territory Okay, I'm going to pop out of this application and I'm going to jump into this shipment distance. Drop this off. So this is another um, another example, just slightly different, of plotting where particular shipments or sales have happened, and then trying to understand how far outside of a, a particular point, whether it be the center of a city or a warehouse, a distribution warehouse, for example, um, are the shipments going. And you can see the colors are coordinated, the point colors are coordinated um, to the different uh, distances of, of the radius, so greater than 10 miles, 5 to 9 miles, and then within 4 miles of this center point. Now, this particular data set, the way that it's been defined, um, the center points of the different things have been picked ahead of time so that these shapes can be generated um, based on a IDVO, the IDVO map engine um, is able to draw and render these things. So if I scroll over one of them, you kind of get an idea of, of what's going on there. But just another example, and I have one more for you. This is um, something that's very useful, a function that's very useful when you have a, a large amount of data points plotted on a map. Um, if you have hundreds of thousands of plotted points or sales that you want to do an analysis on, um, a couple things happen. One, you can see the rendering here is using uh, the sort of the same idea of the click compression engine when there's a lot of points on a, on a scatter map. It condenses them down and gives you some idea of concentration. Um, but what makes this application inside of uh, IDVO map special is that you'll see if you watch the counter over here, as I scroll and zoom into the map, you see this amount changing. Um, so the map's actually taking into account only the area that it's displaying, and then it's adjusting how many, um, in this case, IDs are being counted in this area. So if you're doing an analysis on sales, instead of selecting a particular area, if you zoom into it, if you could you know, kind of zoom in and fit it on the screen, um, you can get an idea of how many points or sales or 
whatever information you're analyzing are contained in there. And then once you get down to the lowest level, um, so almost 2,000 points that are plotted here, uh, you, know, you get to all those individual items. And you can continue going down through uh, to the lower level, and you'll see those numbers adjust. So I, I think this was a feature set that I, you know, if you have a problem with a lot of data points or you want to analyze a lot of data points, um, this is something that I found very useful. Okay, I'm going to take a pause there and I'm going to check the um, participants and see if there's any questions inside of the Q&A. It doesn't look like we have any questions in the Q&A thus far. Um, if you'd like to submit a question, uh, please do so at this time. If you have anything to ask about the IDVO product, the integration, um, or its capabilities, I'd be happy to answer those. I'll, I'll give a few minutes for questions to come in. doesn't look like there's any questions. Um, so this is the end of the IDVO for Click Maps demonstration. Uh, if you need, if you have questions, follow it up. Oh, there was one option or one question that came in uh, around um, describing some detail on the local hosting option. So in terms of um, the licensing, that would be a discussion with IDVO that could be facilitated by us. But to give you an idea of how this product works, um, let me jump back into the uh, the shipping lane. So the the technology, like they say, is hosted on a an Amazon server. Um, so you would stand up a server internally. And if I go back to this edit, you'll kind of see how this connection works. In my map settings, I'm getting a server URL. Um, and then depending on how this URL is set up, that's the server, or rather it's in this one here. Um, the location service URL. Um, this is what's using to be looked up. So this would just be changed to look at uh, an internal server address, um, and then that way you would be using, uh, instead of going out and using their server, um, you would be using the one that's hosted internally. But from my understanding, it's standing up the server, um, installing their mapping engine on it, and then anything you build inside of the click engine, you're just referencing that. Um, mapping engine internally instead of theirs that's hosted. Okay, any other questions? I'll wait a, another minute. Doesn't look like there's any other questions. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining this afternoon. Hopefully this session has been valuable.